Hi, my name is Emrys, and today I'm going to be doing Lab 7 of the 107 Labs, which or the 109 Labs, which is um, extracting some fat from some potato chips. Um, in this lab, my materials are going to be some backyard barbecue potato chips from a redacted brand, and I'm going to want to be able to weigh my potato chips, so I have a balance that has a precision of 0.01 grams and a weigh boat to weigh them in. And then I'm going to want to increase the surface area of my chips so that they can interact with my nonpolar solvent. So I'm going to use a mortar and pestle. And then I'm going to want a solvent to uh, a nonpolar solvent to extract the fats from the potato chips. So I'm using hexane today, and I'm going to be able to measure it in a graduated cylinder. And then when I am um, done mixing my fats and um, my potato chips and my hexane, I'm going to use a filter apparatus to separate the dissolved fat and the hexane from the chips. So I'm going to use a filter paper and a um, filter apparatus to do so. And then I'm going to want a way to dissolve to separate my dissolved fats from my solvent, which is going to be a hot plate. And I'm going to heat, um, heat gently heat the hexane on the hot plate until all the hexane evaporates off, and I'm just left with my fats. And then at the very end, I'm going to want to check whether those fats are saturated or unsaturated, so I have an ice bath as well. A note about safety, um, today I'm following proper safety protocols because I'm wearing splash-proof splash -proof goggles, I'm wearing a lab coat, my clothes meet my closed toe shoes, and then I'm going to be doing all of my work in a hood because I'm working with hexane and I don't want to inhale the vapors. And when I do heat the hexane, I'm going to keep open flames away from it. I'm going to gently heat it on a hot plate. And even though I am using food in lab today, I am not going to eat any of the food or take the bag with me afterwards for lunch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh my potato chips. I'm going to use a weigh boat on the balance. Um, so that way that my analyte, that's the chemical compound that I'm studying, in this case potato chips, doesn't come in contact with the balance because the grease on the potato chips could mess up the mechanics on my balance. And also that way, if I was scraping my potato chips into my mortar and pestle, that that way I wouldn't leave any chips on the balance. This way I get my full 10 grams of potato chips. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh out my weigh boat, and I'm gonna record all the digits that come up on my balance. Even if that last digit's a zero, it's still important to establish the precision of my experiment. I'm going to record this value on my data table under mass of 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. They're calling them Erlenmeyer flasks, but we're using weight boats. Then I'm going to put my potato chips on the balance. I want about 10 grams. And knowing that my weight boat was about 5 grams, my mass now is about 16. So I'm going to record that um, value with all of its digits. Um, and I'm not going to worry about calculating the exact mass of the potato chips yet. I can save that later in my calculations. I'm just going to um, weigh them and know that they're about 10 grams. Then I'm going to take my 10 grams of potato chips and I'm going to put them in my mortar and pestle. The mortar is the bowl bit. And I'm going to grind them up with my pestle, which is the stick bit. To keep all my potato chips in here and this is so we can increase the surface area of the potato chips so they interact better with my solvent. My solvent today is hexane so I'm going to get about 20 milliliters of hexane for my first addition. I'm pouring into a beaker because graduated cylinders are top heavy and so there's it's more likely that I tip it over if I pour directly from the solvent jar into my graduated cylinder. I'm going to measure out about 20 milliliters of hexane and I'm going to add that to my mortar. And then I'm going to continue to grind up my potato chips. filter paper. 
fiber in my uh, funnel apparatus. So I'm going to pour off the hexane from my potato chips into my funnel. I'm going to try not to lose any potato chips. I'm going to add another portion of hexane to my potato chips. I want it to be about 20 milliliters. We're doing a second addition because we want to really make sure we're dissolving all of those fats from the potato chips. And so this way we've rinsed off some of them and are giving an additional portion of hexane to really dissolve any leftover fats left in those potato chips. I'm going to grind for about another minute. Really try and mix together my potato chips and my hexane. And once I feel that they're really well mixed, I'm going to pour that second portion of hexane into my filter paper. Now that I'm done with my potato chips, I can put them in my waste beaker. And I can clean up that mortar and pestle. I'm going to use a paper towel. mortar and pestle while I'm waiting for that to filter. I'm going to try and collect all of my extra potato chips from the hood. So it looks like my fats and hexanes are done filtering. So I'm done with my filter apparatus. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my beaker with my fats and hexane and I'm gonna gently heat off the hexane, which will take a little while, but not very, very long because hexane is very volatile. Also because hexane is very volatile, I'm gonna take my reagent bottle away from my hot plate to decrease risk. So I'm going to turn on my hot plate and I'm going to dissolve this down so that the hexane is gone and all I have left with is the fats. So it looks like my hexane has evaporated and all I am left with is fat. I know this because there isn't any more reflux happening on the edge of the beaker. Um, there aren't any more fumes happening in the beaker, so all that I should be left with is fat, because fat is not as volatile as hexane. I would have been able to see the hexane vapors, but I won't be able to see the vapors from that. So I'm going to turn off my hot plate, and then I'm going to let this beaker cool to room temperature. And once I'm sure that the beaker is room temperature, I'm going to go and weigh it on the balance again. I'm going to record the mass of my beaker and the fats under mass of the 150 milliliter beaker plus lipid extractive. And at this point, I'm realizing that I forgot to weigh my beaker earlier in the experiment. I needed to weigh this beaker empty before I started. So I'm going to weigh it after the experiment is completely over. This will contribute to some error because there may be some stuff left over in the beaker, but this kind of error happens all the time. And it's just uh, important to account for it as much as you can in your experimental reporting of data and in your reporting of the data in the lab report as well. So I have a mass of my beaker and my lipids, which is 115.16 grams. And then the last thing I'm going to do with this before I wash it and get that mass of the empty beaker is I'm going to let it chill in 
an ice bath for a couple of minutes. And what I'm doing here is I'm just checking whether the fats in the potato chips are saturated or unsaturated. The more saturated the fats are, the more likely that they will solidify in the ice bath. There aren't any numerical measurements to be taken here. It's just seeing if it's saturated or not. It's been a couple of minutes. I'm going to check on my fats that were left on ice. They are still pretty liquidy. And this makes sense because if I refer to the nutrition panel on the bag of chips, I can see that most of the fats, of the eight grams of fat included in the bag, um, that six of them, six grams are monounsaturated fats, while only 0.5 gram is saturated fat. So I might expect this liquid to be a little more viscous, but I wouldn't expect it to completely solidify. Now I'm going to go and wash this beaker so that I can get the mass of the empty and clean beaker to fill in my data table. So I am done washing my beaker. I wiped out the fat with a paper towel. I washed it with soap and water. And now that I have a clean, dry beaker, I'm ready to go and weigh it to collect that data that I needed. My beaker without fat is 113 grams, 113.35 grams. So I can go and fill in that data on my data table and then I can start my calculations. Ideally, we would run this experiment twice to get two trials worth of data and then we would make sure to clean up all of our lab space and our glassware benefit of doing this by video. Your TA will provide you with data for multiple trials. Well, you only have to watch me do this experiment once, and I do all the dishes. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.